have you heard of the squint method? This is a unique approach to taking photographs that will help you and other photographers of any skill level find secret images and create stunning compositions. Because you don't need to buy any equipment, you are going to start to see the benefits of the squint method in your images this weekend. How's it, how's it? Welcome back to the Photographic Eye, where I help photographers like you create great photos. I used to get so frustrated when trying to take photos because wherever I looked, I was struggling to see what other photographers were seeing. Like, you know the photo is there, but where is it? Then one day, one of my lecturers at photo school was talking to me about how to remove distracting elements from a print by squinting your eyes. And I started to use this method, not just in the darkroom, but also when out there actually taking photos. Almost immediately, my images became far stronger, less ordinary, had far more impact. And to help you on your journey to creating more remarkable photographs, I'm going to show you how to use the squint method which will radically improve your images by using it to find those secret photos, to create strong compositions, and to give your images that impact and that arrestingness that stops people in their tracks so they're forced to look at your photos. You're going to create wonderful images. And it all starts with literally just squinting your eyes. So all that you are doing is seeing the world out of focus. It is that simple. To begin with, we're gonna find those secret photos. Where are they hiding? Think about the last time you were with a group of photographers and you went somewhere and you were taking photos and you, you just couldn't find anything. Like you were just taking pictures in the hope of coming across a great image. But next time, what I'd like you to do is actually just step back. Take a moment when you first get there to squint your eyes, to see the world as a, as a, as a mesh mash of, of indistinct shapes, because that within those shapes are going to be the clues of the places that you can mine for the amazing photographs. And they're not obvious places either, which makes your images start to become far more remarkable. Once you have found those areas to consider to start mining, then you're going to start using that method again, squinting once again to distill down the scene into its very elements. Think about, you know, when they take water and barley and all that sort of stuff and they make whiskey from it, you're doing the same thing. You're taking very average elements and distilling them through the squint method into an amazing photograph that people are just gonna go, wow, like how did you find that? So that's when you are looking and you're squinting, and you're seeing what sort of options are available to you within this thing that you have seen. You know, what is it offering up that the, the casual viewer, the, the, the bypasser, the, you know, the standard by sort of person is missing because you're now starting to see it with a photographic eye. And of course, isn't that the, the, the irony of the thing is to see with more focus, we need to see with more indistinctness. It's, <laughs> the paradox is, is not lost on me. As you do this, you are going to start seeing shapes and form and texture. And this is what you're going to start using within creating a very strong composition to, you know, to, to take your photograph to the next level. You can use this technique in any situation, in portraiture, in landscape, in street photography, wherever, it does not matter. Next time you're out there, just squint. You may feel a bit silly, but <laughs> don't we all? Hey, you know, I feel silly all the time, right? But give it a try. See what happens with your images. How it unlocks the door to seeing the potential that's all around you. Another way that you can employ using the squint method to improve your images is by, you know, honing in on composition with it. As you've been squinting all these things, right? Then there's gonna be shapes coming out. And I'm a big believer that we should photograph shapes and not things, especially when it comes to composition. So look at this photograph that I took in a studio a little while back. When we blur it, can you start to see compositional elements, leading lines, framing and what have you, come out of the image? Because we're not thinking of the image anymore as a person, but as an indistinct collection of, of shapes. And in this case, of light and dark shapes. 
This is a, a, such an overlooked thing within composition that you may be familiar with the basics, you know, leading lines, rules of thirds, symmetry, that sort of arrangement. When you start blurring your eyes, you're going to see the world in not just indistinct shapes, but indistinct light and shade. And that will give you an idea about how these things can all be put together to further your image, to make it more impactful. Alex Webb is a master at doing this. As you look at these photographs, think about how different it would be if he was not aware of the interplay between the light and the shade in these photographs. This is what makes these images, this interplay. And it's a lot easier to see when you are blurring your eyes and you are not having to worry about all the extraneous stuff that is interfering with what you're looking at. You can go out there today. Next time you're wandering around, just blur your eyes. Try not to fall over if <laughs> you're walking about, right? And see the light and the shade that is all around you. That's what gives your photographs a voice. It makes them musical. Light and shade and shadow is such an overlooked aspect of photography that is your secret weapon, which you are now able to use. Now I mentioned about using shadow because we're going to talk about color and, and you know, color can be a very tricky thing. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of color theory and, and I just, it just, it makes my head hurt and I'm sure it probably does, does a lot of you as well, but it is an important thing and we need to use it. So when we are blurring our eyes, we not only see the light and the shade, but also we, we stop seeing what colors are dominant in the frame. You know, the reds, the blues, the greens, and you know, if we're in the UK right now, then all those, all those interesting browns. Um, and when you put them together with the shade, then an interesting thing happens. First of all, you can use color as a compositional element by, you know, drawing the eye to various things. You can make the colors brighter and more vivid. Look at these Pete Turner images. The colors are vivid and strong because they are contrasted with dark things. If you're interested about learning more in, you know, how these sort of aspects work together, I'm going to link to a video at the end of this that talks in more depth about composition and, and specifically color. In the modern world, we really, you know, we, we are blessed that we have on one hand the ability to reach millions of people with our photographs, but on the other hand, we're also competing against millions of other photos. So we need ways to, to arrest somebody's eye, to draw them into the image, you know, to, to get them to stop scrolling, to get them to pause when they're walking through a gallery. And the squint method will help you do this, absolutely, because you are going to learn a very important lesson about an image, and that is when it's indistinct, does it still hold together? Does it still make a bit of sense? Now, I'm not talking about, you know, the ideas of, you know, really depth, like story and meaning here, but I'm talking about if the casual observer just walked past and was just scrolling, could their eye look at it and go, oh, that's something interesting? Because immediately on the surface, they can grab hold and they can put their, their visual hooks into it, as you were, or you're putting your visual hooks into them and saying, look, spend a moment looking at my photograph. So employ this technique. Now you can do this when you are about to take the photograph. Either you sort of squint and say, does this still make a little bit of sense if I am now squinting at it? Or if you're like me and you have really bad eyesight, you know, just take a picture, look at the back of the screen and look at it here where it's completely blurry and see what happens. Does the picture still hold together at a very basic level? If it does, that's a clue that your composition is working great. That's, that's fantastic. It also means that you're gonna stand a far better chance of standing out in this crowd of people who were just constantly you know, bombarding us with photographs and saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, right? But you, are, you now know the secret to stopping their screen, screening, their screening, their, their infinite scrolling. <laughs> If you are struggling with using framing in your images, this is where you have elements in the foreground that kind of frame within the frame. You see it a lot in Alex Webb's work and some other examples that I'm gonna put up on the screen for you here now. 
it's a wonderful technique. There's a lot of depth to your images and certainly takes them to being more remarkable because they've gone a little bit beyond the obvious, right? But it is a tricky thing. And if you're trying to get to grips with it, what you can do is, you know, close one eye and walk around and, and do this thing. You know, when you see those film directors, they hold up a loop to their, their eye and they're framing the shot and what have you. You're doing a similar thing. You are walking around, squinting <laughs> like this, looking to see if you can include other elements in the foreground that will be out of focus possibly, that are going to enhance the scene. And that's an important thing I want you to bear in mind, is enhancing the scene. Everything within your photograph that you have put together so carefully needs to enhance the image, not, not ruin it. Because how many photos, how many photos have we seen at, critique sessions that have been otherwise great images, but spoiled by the fact that there's a little errant thing just creeping in that shouldn't be there. That, that if you've done the squint test, if you've done all of these things, if you've gone through the process of creating and crafting an image, they wouldn't be there distracting from everything else that you've worked so hard to put together in such a wonderful way. So ask yourself, before you press the shutter, say, is there anything in this image that is ruining it? Think about, you know, distracting highlights, all those sort of things. A street at night with all the neon, right? The neon's great, but are there, when you blur your eyes, other elements that are distracting from the neon? Think about it that way, because we so often overlook the things that are always obvious and always there. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoy it. And if you have, I've got a link to a video here that goes into more depth about composition, which I know you're gonna be able to use to take your images to the next level. Thank you once again ever so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.